Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome back after tea. So um, as uh, Professor Fartek had mentioned in his uh, morning talk, so we'll be, uh, in future, we'll be conducting uh, most of our workshops through MOOCs. So uh, that's why this talk will help you to understand how, what are MOOCs, how uh, MOOCs are created. So this talk will give you an overview of about um, MOOCs and how it is created and how you can use MOOCs. So I, uh, so I am Kalpana Kannan, project coordinator for the T10KT and also IIT Bombay X. So incidents, I just want to know how many of you are aware of our platform, IIT Bombay X? Oh, that's good. And how many of you have taken any courses on IIT Bombay X? Okay, very good. So, um, so I, I know that some of you are already familiar with the platform, but uh, this talk will you know, make you even more familiar. So um, I'll be talking about how to implement MOOCs through IIT Bombay X. So this is the outline of my talk. So uh, initially, I'll just introduce you to what are the various uh, platforms available uh, for MOOCs, and what are MOOCs, and in particular, I'll be talking about IIT Bombay X. Then I'll also be talking about how MOOCs are created. You know, that is very important because uh, many people don't know. Like, they all see only the learning management system, which is the um, front end, uh, IIT Bombay X platform or any other platform. But what goes behind, there's a lot of work. So once I explain that, you'll know, like, MOOC is, creating MOOC is not a joke. It's a lot of work. And uh, so, uh, that, uh, so MOOC workflow I'll be talking about. And then I'll also be talking about how we have adopted MOOCs in our classroom teaching and how IIT Bombay has adopted MOOCs on uh, various ways. And I'll be concluding my talk with a demo. My colleague Urmila and Hitesh are here. So they will uh, walk you through the IIT Bombay X platform. So uh, if you're not familiar with the platform, don't worry. So we'll give you a live demo of the, our own platform. So this session will have only about IIT Bombay X and how MOOCs are created. So uh, just to give you a historical perspective, in the year 2000, Professor Fatek started the distance education program, which is called DEP. And uh, so this, um, so initially uh, we, were, we were delivering live lectures through VSAT or EDUSAT. And then that uh, the distance education program, it became bigger and then we had we have our own now since uh, Center for Distance Engineering Education Program. Uh, I hope you are all familiar with NPTEL. So NPTEL, uh, CDEEP coordinates the NPTEL activities and they also transmit a lot of live courses. So it is a Center for Distance Engineering Education. It's a um, center in IIT Bombay. And then in 2005, how many of you were aware of Eklavia project? In 2005, I think there were very few colleges which joined this Eklavia project. So uh, what happened was Professor Fartek uh, in 2004, 2005, he traveled across the country and he found that uh, in many colleges there are a lot of good students but they don't have good mentors or teachers. So he uh, came up with the idea of uh, um, floating a project uh, which was called Eklavia. So this had uh, three components. In fact, I joined in 2005 so I, I know like how the whole thing happened. So in um, 2005, we floated uh, three, uh, com there were three components of uh, Eklavia project. One was called eGuru, which was e-mentoring for the uh, B uh, students uh, project mentoring. And then we had e-outreach program. So uh, there, the, in fact, I was coordinating the e-outreach program. There we used to record all the lectures, uh, like the live uh, lectures given by the faculty members uh, in a CEP program or something. And then we used to record it and make it available on the web so that anybody can download and use them later on. So uh, we ran this program for um, three years, from 2005 uh, to, uh, to 2000, almost 2009. And in 2009, we got the funding from MHRD for the uh, trained uh, thousand teacher training pro program. So uh, in the thousand teacher training program, initially we started with only 22 remote centers. And these 22 sim remote centers already had the EDUSAT facility. But we were not able to scale up because this EDUSAT setup was very expensive. It was around two to three lakhs, I believe. So uh, not many institutions were able to afford this kind of money. So later on, 
Uh, in 2009 itself, Amrita came up and they said that we have this facility, AVU. So we tested it initially with some uh, remote centers and it worked well. In fact, in uh, December 2009, I think this was started. And for the first workshop, we had both EDUSAT as well as AVU. And we compared, we asked the participants, how was the reception for AVU? So everybody said it was excellent. So only because AV was on internet, a lot of people could afford it, and we could scale it up in no time. So that's when, uh, in 2009 to 2012, we slowly increased the number of remote centers. So um, I think in 2000, uh, end of 2012, we had uh, around 100 remote centers. And then in 2012, ministry said that why are you doing only for um, 1,000 teachers? We want to scale up. And so then we immediately said, OK, we will try it out. And uh, we increased the number of remote centers from 100 to 250. And then now we have around 357 remote centers. So that's how the whole thing happened. And from 1,000 teacher training program, we went to 10,000 teacher training program. And now in 2015, uh, even because we can train only in thousands, whereas in MOOCs, we can train in lakhs. So <laughs> we have to think bigger. So now uh, we have our own platform, MOOC platform. So in 2015, we adopted the uh, Open edX platform, and uh, we modified it, and it is called IIT Bob X. So from 2015 to 2017, we have uh, worked very hard, and uh, now we know, like, how the, um, uh, because MOOC is totally a different game, and we, we had to learn it by doing. So there was no shortcut. So we have learned our lessons, and uh, here we are. So as you all know, MOOC is a very new concept in the education. So 2012, it became popular world, world over. And there are a couple of big MOOC providers in the world. So they are edX, Coursera, Udacity, and FutureLearn. So out of the uh, four, the first three are US-based, and FutureLearn is UK-based. And out of these four, only edX and FutureLearn, uh, they, have, they are open source. All others are not open, uh, they are all commercial. So uh, we joined with edX in uh, 2013. We have signed up an MOU. And this is, edX is not-for-profit organization founded by MIT and Harvard. And uh, this, because uh, this was open source, so we said uh, we will um, sign an MOU and we will modify that platform for our own good. So um, IIT Bombay is a chartered member of edX. And uh, IIT Bombay's first MOOC was floated on edX in July 2014. So we first launched our MOOC on the global platform. And then, uh, because uh, we had to learn how to create a MOOC, so we first did it on the global platform. And then we came to our local platform. So the, now, uh, IIT Bombay X is the platform which we are using. And this was launched on Republic Day, 26 January 2015. So far, we have offered 40 courses and we have more than one lakh learners. So this is how our platform looks like. So this is uh, the URL. You can note it down if, if you don't know about it. So these are some of the courses which we have offered on IIT Bombay X. So introduction to computer programming. So we have mainly all the engineering courses, plus the technical communication for scientists and engineers. This is a non-engineering course and the use of ICT, which was talked about in the morning. So this was the use of ICT in education for online and blended uh, learning. This was a faculty development program. And we also have some skill development uh, courses on our platform. So the basic uh, 3D animation using Blender. Dr. Samir Thasabute conducted this uh, MOOC, and he'll be talking about it in the afternoon session. So this is the statistics. So in just two years, we have reached out to more than one lakh learners. We have floated 40 courses. Um, and this, these 40 courses are not unique courses because MOOC has a provision of rerunning the courses. So once you do the work, you can um, rerun the course and you can rerun it any number of times. So that is one advantage of MOOC. Like you record it and you, the platform is available and you can rerun it many number of times. And so we have covered almost the entire country. And we have three partners. IIT Kharagpur is our partner in T10KT and I am Bangalore is our partner uh, in uh, IIT Bombay X. So they, in fact, they floated their courses on our platform. Now we have modified OpenEdX and we have given them 
their own platform. So IIT uh, Bombay is providing all the technical help to IIM Bangalore. And TIS was, uh, is, uh, they initially started, but now we are just mentoring them uh, in how to create MOOCs. And we have given 18,000 plus certificates. So I just want to tell you like how big is the operation. So we have, as Professor Fatak said in the morning, we have 300 plus project staff. And out of that, only to handle MOOC, we have so many teams. So you can imagine, uh, so massive is in the terms of, you know, we have, we have to use a lot of manpower to do this. So we have a development team. Aparna heads the development team. So this is a team of software engineers who have modified the open edX and implemented. So, uh, so the, we have a couple of software engineers in the development team. We have system admin team. Uh, Abhilash heads the system admin team. So uh, because a lot of data, video, a lot of things go into MOOC. So to manage that, we need good hardware, server, and cloud setup. So all that is managed by the system admin team. We have studio team, so of course, Sajjan, you all know. Sajjan, Shushant, and his team, they manage all the video recording, editing for the MOOC. So some teams are doing a lot of work. Uh, content team is a new team which has been formed only for MOOC purpose. So we have uh, Urmila here and Hitesh and a couple of others who manage the content on the IIT Bombay X platform as well as on the edX platform. So they are responsible for course authoring and management because this is a very complex um, platform. So uh, people have to know how to upload videos, how to put it in a proper format. So for all that, we need a separate team which manages the content for this. And then we have Blended MOOCs admin team, which is the current workshop team. Uh, you are all aware of uh, Mahindra and Sandeep and others. So they will be handling the Blended MOOCs admin. So um, they are already handling, but when it becomes bigger, they will be doing more work on this. We have Blended MOOC software team. Uh, Shweta is here. She heads the Blended MOOCs uh, software team, uh, which is, uh, they manage the MIS because a lot of data gets uh, this thing, and in Blended MOOCs, every faculty member in the college, they want to know how their uh, students are doing. So we have given a separate dashboard uh, where they can see only their students. So uh, Shweta will give a demo in the afternoon session, so you will understand how it happens. And we, the, the course team is um, faculty member and his TAs. They uh, constitute the course team. So this course team will vary from one course to another, but all other teams will be common for all the courses. So this is uh, how we have organized ourselves, and this is true for any, um, anybody who is planning to give a move. So we, so we should have a MOOC coordinator or a program manager, and then he has to coordinate between, he or she has to coordinate be, between be, uh, various teams. And then we, uh, the course faculty, when he's giving the MOOC, he has to interact with the studio team, content team, and his own like uh, TAs, so course team. So um, as you can see, um, the team, uh, I already explained to you about the team, so their functions I would like to uh, highlight. So the video recording, editing, rendering is done by the studio team. Transcription, uh, uploading, proofreading, video syncing, all that is done by the content team. And the course team, uh, which consists of a uh, faculty member and his, his TAs, they have to plan all the lectures. Uh, they have to plan the quizzes, assignments, and um, uh, they also do the beta testing. And uh, I don't know how many of you are aware of, like we also do beta testing before the course goes live. Because uh, if anything goes wrong, even where there are so many small, small things, one has to check. So uh, beta testers has the job of checking all the links, whether everything is working properly before the course goes live. So uh, that also the course team does. So sometimes our team also, they also do the beta testing. So these are the various steps which are involved in creating a MOOC. So um, unlike um, lecture, which you just give, come and give, um, here, there's a lot of planning required. So, um, so uh, the MOOC has to be planned properly, and then the next step is you have to create it, and then you have to run it. So there are three distinct steps in, involved in creating a MOOC and running a MOOC. So uh, we have to announce these MOOC well ahead of time. 
So it's, it, this is especially true in a global platform when uh, you are announcing your MOOC. It has to be anywhere between six to one month before the launch. And then each course has its, each MOOC has its own name, code, and a banner. Banner image is what you see on the display. So you identify a course by the course name, code, and the banner. And each course will have its own short description, long description, objectives, uh, course levels, like uh, some courses may be just uh, basic level, intermediate, or advanced. So you have, to add a, you have to say that your course is at what level. And in every course will have their own prerequisites. Because unless uh, they qualify, uh, like so everybody has to know what are the prerequisites for the course, then only they can register for their course. And the course staff, image and profile is also put up on the course announcement page. The course handouts are also very um, important in a MOOC because the course handouts tell what the uh, contents of the course will be, what will the grading policy, all that you have to announce upfront. Uh, what are the textbooks, references, what are the collaborating guidelines, forum guidelines, and course calendar because these courses will run for anywhere between six to eight weeks, so people should know what are the deadlines. So in uh, so all courses, we um, say that they should uh, display their course calendar well ahead of time. So the organization of a MOOC is into sections, subsections, units, and components. So, um, so it is a hierarchical structure. So the section comes first, and then subsection, then unit, and then we have four components. The video component, HTML component, discussion forum, and the problem component. So all this my colleagues will um, explain to you when they do the demo. So uh, these are the four components. So this is the lecture flow, video lecture flow chart. So we, um, the faculty member has to prepare the lecture. He has to record it. Uh, and the editing team, the video team does the editing, rendering. And then the content team takes over. They do the transcription, proofreading, syncing, and uh, the proofreading, we also say, uh, tell the course team to check it once. So the proofreading uh, is done by the uh, TAs. Then we do the video syncing. And then beta testing is done by the course team. And the, then the course gets launched. And you can imagine the amount of time which is required. So each 15 minute video requires about six to eight man hours of post-production work. So you can now, you will now know it is not very easy to make a MOOC. In fact, I tell everybody it is like making a movie. So um, faculty members are the you know, stars, they are the um, hero and heroines, and there's a whole lot of you know, background work which goes on in producing that movie. And the only difference is uh, here the script gets written after the movie is made. So we do the transcription after the movie is made, and we don't have villains and songs in the movie. <laughs> so um, running and managing a MOOC is, again, um, it's a lot of work. So we, uh, this is an optional. We, it is very easy to conduct a survey or a poll on a MOOC platform. Then we have weekly releases of course content. So incidentally, there are two ways of um, you know, releasing a MOOC. One is called the instructor pace, where we release the content week by week. And another is called self-paced, where we release all the content in one go. So people can join any time, and they can exit any time. And uh, we have to keep track of all the discussion forums. So the TAs, mainly we need a lot of TAs who will answer the discussion forum questions. Release of quizzes, assignments, final examination, exit survey. And once the course is finished, we also archive it for the future reruns. And then the certification is given. So this is a screenshot. If you have not seen uh, our uh, platform, this is how the video lecture looks. So this is, uh, you must all be familiar with Professor Gayatunde. And on the right side, you see the transcript. And as you, uh, so because these transcripts are synced with the video, so you can go to any place and play, the video will also play from that point. So it's also vice versa. And you can see how the course is organized on the left side of the panel. And we have also done some um, uh, transcription in, and dubbing in Hindi. We just wanted to do a pilot. So we did it for two courses, Professor Gaitunde's course and Professor uh, Fatak's course. So this, uh, so this also works well 
so we can do regional language uh, transcription for some of the courses, especially for the skill development course which we are planning to offer. Uh, this is a screenshot of the quiz. So uh, you can, uh, there are multiple uh, ways you can assess the uh, MOOC participants. So the, this is a multiple choice uh, quiz. Um, my colleagues will explain uh, what are the different options available um, in, the, in the quiz component. So recently, UGC has announced about uh, YM platform. Yeah. Uh, yeah YM platform students can register for courses and they can get some credits. Yeah. Whether uh, this IIT Bombay, IITx uh, comes under that scheme, Swayam scheme, no? Uh, no, so actually, uh, so because we started, uh, Swayam is a recent development, like it uh, launched only a year oh, it ago. It gives a leverage for the students to register for courses and they can get credits. They did not attend yeah. the classes in university nowadays. Yeah, yeah so, so three that, courses they can uh, afford. Uh. Yeah. So um, uh, Swayam is a national platform. This is our own IIT uh, Bombay X is IIT Bombay's platform. Then but we have we, also an NPTEL platform, no? the online courses they are offering NPTEL. Uh, and I think uh, NPTEL uh, MOOC, uh, so on, uh, on Swayam only it is called NPTEL MOOC, if I am not mistaken. But uh, this, even the Swayam platform, um, the, the, not many, um, like uh, I think it, they have just started, so we don't know. Uh, like the similar kind of... Uh, yeah, yeah, it is. Screenshot so is what are, I have seen there. No, yeah, so uh, there, so you have different platforms for MOOC. So, so IMS have a national platform. So, IIT Bombay will also uh, might be in future. It might be offering courses on SOIM as well. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Uh, that NPTEL we are talking about. That uh, those are open videos, so you can learn things from uh, those videos. Video courses are separate, okay. and MOOCs courses are different. NPTEL. Yeah, they are. They, they, sir, they must be. I don't know if they are conducting MOOC courses or not. Yeah, yeah they are offering no. MOOCs for the past two years. They're offering. So, um, anyway, coming back. Uh, so, uh, we have adopted MOOCs in uh, different ways. Uh, Professor Fatak already talked about uh, some of them in morning session. So uh, blended MOOCs uh, is uh, what uh, we have offered. And we have also offered, um, we, are, we are also uh, using MOOCs in the flipped classroom method. And we have conducted this uh, first FDP uh, uh, on our platform. So faculty development program also, for that also we are using our uh, MOOCs. So uh, blended MOOCs, what is blended MOOCs? So um, I know some of you might be already familiar, but uh, MOOCs which is taken in lieu of regular courses. So you can ask your uh, students to take MOOC, so the, and then we will give you the additional admin support. And uh, the, whatever is not covered in MOOC, the local faculty member can supplement it by his own lectures. So the courseware is available through MOOCs. And specific portion, whatever is not covered in MOOC, the faculty member can be taught uh, locally. And teachers can give marks for their in-class work, projects, etc. And invalidation is also possible, like if you want a proctored exam, uh, when they are writing uh, the, um, uh, taking the online exam, you can do that. And uh, uh, students can also earn credits for MOOCs, so which what you are talking about. So I think AICT and UGC have also, uh, all, already permitted that 20% of the credit can be earned through MOOCs, but the details are still being worked out whether it has to be a national platform only or for any MOOC anywhere. So we don't know, so the details are still being worked out. Okay, so uh, I don't know the details, so, um, so I think it will be up soon. So here I just want to tell you, uh, you are all familiar with the different modes of interaction, but I just want to highlight that the face-to-face, -face, which we are all used to from ages, uh, is the classroom teaching. What is required? So in face-to-face, -face, you have to have same time, same place, like what we are doing now, like face-to-face -face is same time, same place, So which is also synchronous. So, But this is highly uh, interactive, very effective, but what is the disadvantage? That it is not scalable. And we have uh, lack of good teachers. So it is not possible to uh, scale up because of this problem. So synchronous is same time, anywhere. So this we used in our T10KT. But uh, again, there was a problem. Like so, uh, for two weeks, a lot of people said that they, they cannot you know, come for two weeks to, uh, in one place. And even though we made it, like they, they have to just go to the nearest remote centers 
it was effective for some time, but after some time, everybody started saying that this two weeks are not, you know, I have exam duty, I have this admission. So it is impossible to get everybody together in one place for two weeks. So it is scalable, it is also interactive, but all have to also learn at the same uh, speed. So which is not, as Professor Fatak said in the morning. So we assume that everybody will be in the same level and they will learn things at the same time and same speed, which is not true. So individual learners have different uh, capabilities and give, uh, different speed of learning. So the synchronous thing does not work for everybody. It is good for some, but not good for many. Asynchronous is anytime, anywhere, which is what has come up uh, in the form of MOOCs and also the spoken tutorial, which I'm sure all of you are aware of, this is another national uh, mission project. So this is scalable convenient and also the cost is reduced. Even though the cost of making a MOOC is high, but when you average it out per participant, the cost is very less because we are talking in lakhs. So if um, uh, many students register, the cost per student will come down. But what is missing is the interactivity. So in MOOCs, because it is asynchronous, uh, the, there is less interactivity. Uh, because the interactivity happens only through forums um, or uh, any social media. But, so, so to compensate this, we have come up with this blended MOOCs. So in blended MOOCs, anytime, anywhere with interaction. So here, so th uh, because the interactive is mis missing in the plain MOOCs, we have to have some kind of interaction to make it more effective. So it's, it is scalable, convenient, cost is reduced, and the interaction will happen through ABU. So we thank Amrita University for providing this wonderful tool for interaction. So we'll be using AVU for the interaction, and but the disadvantage is we have to have both. The uh, It has to be asynchronous as well as synchronous. So uh, this is the blended MOOC statistics. So we have, so far we have offered 12 courses in the blended MOOC format. Uh, 60 institutions have participated. And from these institutions, so we call them blended teachers who used this in the blended teaching. So 400 plus faculty members have used. And we have given um, certificates to 22,000 uh, students. Now coming to the flipped classroom, we have also used MOOC in the flipped classroom method. For CS101X, uh, the computer programming course, this is a course which is offered to all UG students. And the class size is really huge. We have 550 plus students in this class. So here we said that the students let the students go through the material, um, or the recorded material before the coming to the class. And when they come to the class, it will be only for the discussion and problem solving. So we have used uh, CS101 in the flipped mode. Similarly, uh, the technical communication course which is HS791. This is a compulsory course for all PG and uh, PhD students in IIT. And uh, there are more than 800 students for this course every semester. So this is a huge class. So it is not possible for the faculty members to conduct such huge, it is possible, but it is very difficult. I have a query here. Uh, this is already implemented, uh, this flipped classroom in IIT Bombay? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, in that case, you might have gathered feedback. Yeah. So I would like to know, in fact, you have 800 students here. So ensuring them to listen to these video lectures every class hour before they come to the class, they need to listen to it. It's a very Herculean task. So how come you ensure that the students yeah. have uh, listened to the lectures and have uh, yeah. reaching your class? Yeah. So uh, it's a very good question. So, um, in fact, so we, we have something called recap quizzes. Um, so, so we, uh, just to make sure that students have gone through the videos, we conduct, uh, so uh, in the every session, when they, in the class session, so for first 10 minutes is spent only uh, to uh, gather the knowledge that the students have gone through the video. So there will be a 10 minute quiz on the video itself just to make sure that the uh, students have gone through the video. Uh, through your uh, paper test or uh, through Viva? No, uh, yeah. no it, it's online. Online, okay. Yeah. So they need to give answers and uh, you'll record. Yeah, so you'll uh, know, uh, we'll know. We, so we use so the, all, hmm? You use uh, Akash tablet for uh, ensuring. No, so different, the uh, no, different uh, teachers are using different methods. So I, I don't know. Okay. So, but uh, it is possible to gather data whether they have gone through the uh, videos or not. 
because in fact we are experimenting and we are finding it extremely difficult to force the students to listen to these lectures and come to the classroom. That's very difficult we are facing. That's why I inquired. Yeah, it, it is a challenge, but yeah. yes, uh, the faculty member has to make sure he has... Because once if a student is going to miss that lecture without listening, if he's going to enter the class, that 50 minutes, one hour is going to be a complete waste for him. Okay, he'll be sitting simply idly and without doing any job because unless you listen to the lecture, yeah. you will not be in a position to solve problems and that's a big problem we are facing. Yeah. So yeah. we generally address this issue by having the recap quizzes. So yeah. I think uh, you have to come up with a method like okay. how, okay. how you Thank want you. to ensure you. that, that yeah. uh, students have gone through the material. So uh, this course is uh, taught by 10 faculty members across various departments. So also, the, um, it is very difficult to coordinate between the faculty members. So it's, once a MOOC is created, it is easy. Like uh, People have to just listen to the lectures. And, uh, and similarly, uh, you can talk to Professor Kannan uh, in the afternoon session. He, has, he always conducts his class in the flipped classroom. So he, he can explain to you uh, in a better way like how he manages. So the digital control course is taught by him. Uh, digital control course is taught by Professor Kannan Montgalia. And he always does in a flipped classroom. And in fact, he has also written a paper which explains like the flipped method uh, is uh, uh, effective or not. So there's also paper available by him. So you can talk to him later. So uh, the faculty development uh, MOOC, which uh, Professor Patak talked about in the morning. So large scale teacher training uh, with MOOCs. So it is uh, live interaction is through AVU. And teachers are exposed to MOOCs based education. And we find that we can reduce the cost by this method. And also the MOOC's education can be strengthened with live interaction. And we found that better completion rate and satisfaction level with, with the interaction because the MOOC does not, they, it does not provide the interactivity. So, but we are going to use AVU for the interactivity. So, uh, Professor Fartek told about this in the morning. So, I just want to highlight. So, these were the enrollments uh, in the use of ICT. Uh, in education and online and blended learning, which was conducted from May to July. So 4,000 plus uh, participants had registered and uh, uh, more than 50% cleared it. And the certificate of excellence was given to 383. And out of that, 253 were selected for the cash award, which was sponsored by SAP. And we also um, got 700 OERs got created and which passed through the plagiarism check, which Professor Fatak already mentioned in his morning session. And uh, participants developed websites using WordPress and peer assessment was used for evaluation. So these are some of the feedback from the participants. We can just go through it. So um, now I'll talk about what are the benefits for a faculty member who is giving a MOOC. So uh, more time is available for class discussion. Uh, animation and other ICT tools can be used, uh, which you cannot use it in uh, uh, chalk and uh, talk mode. Uh, supplementing or modifying the content is easy because each module is 10, 10 minutes. So you can, if you, if you are not happy, you want to redo it, you can just, you have to just redo that, that 10 minute thing. If you want to add something, it is possible. And machine grading is useful for large classes. And peer evaluation can be used for essay type questions. So this facility is also available on the platform. So in fact, for the FDP participants recently, last weekend, uh, we conducted a uh, session for, for the FDP participants and they did the peer evaluation on our platform. And collaborative work is easy. So um, uh, what are the benefits for the students? So uh, as Professor Fatak said, each one has their own learning pace. So learning at their own pace is possible. Uh, and active learners instead of pa passive listeners. So, uh, because we can use this uh, to make it very interactive. And course material can be revisited for better understanding. So, as uh, Professor Fatak says, you cannot rewind a professor, but you can uh, rewind a video. If you don't understand, you can rewind a video and listen to it again and again. Um, discussion forum encourages learners to learn from peers and community. And recap quizzes, this is what I was talking about. Uh, improves the learning before proceeding to the next topic. So uh, there are also a lot of challenges. Uh, creating a good MOOC is time consuming as I, so now you know like what all goes behind the scene. So this MOOC, creating a MOOC is time consuming, manpower intensive. Evaluation is a challenge. So not all like you have to make it machine gradable. So you should know what kinds of questions you will ask. 
and participants belong to diverse age group, culture, education uh, backgrounds. This is especially true when you are offering a MOOC for the global participants. So you have to take all this into account when you are offering a MOOC. And students may get overloaded. This is what you were talking about like in the flipped classroom. Many people say that I have to watch the video before coming to the class, so I'm actually doing more work. But you, there is a way to reduce their burden. So if you have three hour contact hours in a, a week, you can say that you, uh, you don't come for one contact hour or two contact hour. We'll meet only once a week. And for the rest of the two, this thing, you just watch the video and so th there are ways to you know solve the, the, uh, such problems, uh, but you have to make sure that if they don't study, like you said, if they don't study, they will not learn anything. So one has to implement it in a proper way. Then only it will work. You cannot say that the videos are there. You go listen to it and come to the class. Nobody will, you know. Uh, so then it will uh, not work properly. So one has to enforce it in a proper way. There are ways people have done it, and you can. I'm sure you can do it. Some of the there are some self-study courses. Self-study credits are there for some of the courses yeah. in some of the universities in India and abroad. Yeah. So how does this MOOC, this MOOC is a refined way of self-study, I hope. Yes, yeah, so, uh, MOOC is like it is available, the content is available for anybody to uh, access. As you rightly pointed out, evaluation is a challenge, only multiple choice and all those uh, computer-based exams only we have to conduct. Writing skills, or diminished. That's, yeah, but that's another thing. So uh, essay type, there is a provision where you can judge your students in the essay type, de descriptive questions also. But not not ev ev every uh, method. Uh, so th you have to, if you have to offer a MOOC, you have to do. Even the faculty member has to do a lot of work, background work. If a teacher, you have to come up with methods how you want to assess your students. Yeah, if a teacher is to teach for 500 or 800 students at a time. How is the method works? Uh, how is the facilities required and all? Uh, that's, so, what I'm uh, that's why I'm saying for a large class, hmm. MOOC is very good because you don't have to, you can ask the students to go through the material. Okay. And you can conduct online exams. So uh, physical presence of 500 people in one uh, place is not re uh, needed. Not required. Yeah. They have to read on their own and then study on their uh, own and attend exams only directly. So instead of three hours per week, you can teach only one hour yeah. as a contact hours yeah. and remaining two hours they have to read. Yeah. So this is basically we are reducing the interactive sessions. Interactive sessions you, you are re reducing but then you think that when you are lecturing everybody understands. So, uh, so that is also like... Uh, yeah. Uh, many people of uh, out of 500, if it's a, if it's a large class, uh, uh, IIT students are creamy students. What about uh, local colleges? That's a big <laughs> question. <laughs> they will study on their own, but other colleges, I hope. Okay, fine. Thank uh, you, madam. One question. Yeah. Uh, actually, as Professor Patak, I think emphasized on the NBA. So in NBA, there is a one uh, aspects called as a design of experiment. Uh. So uh, we feel. Uh, faculty or expertise uh, in that area is very less in uh, various colleges, I think. So if you can uh, have this blended MOOCs uh, training program for the students, so it will be a great help. Uh, so uh, any individual request we will handle later. So you just... Because this is not again my request. I think if all colleges, AICT approved colleges are going for NBA, then this is one of the major uh, component in which a student should be able to analyze research data and do the interpretation sort of thing. So uh, everywhere there is a dearth of uh, this thing, uh, faculty who are expert in research methodology and these yeah, so, allied uh, subjects. Research methodology, we have uh, already we have a, a course we conducted in fact twice we have conducted on uh, the t10kt so research methodology we will have a mooc definitely uh, i am asking uh, moocs right because i am asking this for the students not for the faculty yeah yeah so in future whatever mooc you want you just let us know we cannot offer everything but we will try our best because this is what I suggested to my management to include this, but they are uh, not very clear. So I thought okay, we can implement this via MOOCs. Okay. Thank you. So anyway, things are evolving. See, we, we are all learning. So um, we have to come up like what works. Uh, something might work, something may not work. So we are all uh, evolving with the technology. You know, there was a comment that some students will not uh, 
study on their own. Yeah. So that is true. I mean, um, I think, uh, you know, we as people tend to be social animals and we learn, learn in groups and with other people rather than just learning by myself. Especially at, uh, at the undergraduate level is very difficult. Yeah. So I believe here you have the intervention of the teacher can use a view yeah. to give them suggestions. In addition to that, what we are now starting to experiment at uh, Amrita also is for these MOOCs, we can create what we call an online chat room. Okay. So then the students can come in there anytime and talk to each other and solve each other's problems. Because then, you know, um, it can be moderated or it may not be moderated. It can even have a text chat. And, you know, once they, and it can just be an AVU session, which you already have. So people can just come into AVU. They have open access, let's say, to some class. And then they can discuss their problems and issues anytime. So this aspect of becomes then peer-to-peer -peer learning, which is actually where most of the learning takes place, yeah. even, even in regular classrooms. You know, people sit in groups and learn. That's where the real learning takes place. So what, what I'm suggesting is that you could use chat rooms as an online mechanism for peer-to-peer uh, -peer learning. Okay. You could try that. Yeah, we can try that. Um, another comment I had was that, uh, you know, for flip classroom, there's a very good paper called uh, Sage on the, on the stage, stage to guide on the side. You can Google it and you'll find that paper. It's an excellent paper. So what is happening with all this online technology is that the role of the teacher yeah, is changing he, he from him. being the you know person who stands on the stage and gives the lecture to, to let the students it. learn and then guide them. Yeah. So everything is, as I said, the, the things are evolving. When it comes to the MOOC, what happened always, we are always thinking that replacing whole our system to the MOOC. It is not like that. So don't consider that our regular teaching process is very bad and we want to replace it and there is interactivity. Uh, think yourself that how much interactivity was there in 90 minute lectures. So hopefully 15 minutes, 20 minutes, not more than that. So why MOOC was added? To have an interactivity. So either it is three uh, sessions in a week is replaced with one session, but that complete 90 minute is an interactivity. So I don't know uh, at everybody's place how much is the uh, peer, the faculty is available for the interaction after the class and so many things. But I uh, practice it uh, in my college. It is average students are there. I ask them to just go through that half an hour lecture on data structure, basic concept, and I take a 90 minute on a practice session. Student will work on that. They will write the programs. I will help them. So basically. Uh, don't consider each and every course has to be replaced by the MOOC. There is interactivity required, then you can definitely go for the MOOC. Not only the MOOC platform and other things, there are video lectures available. Platform is also not actually required because in NPTEL we have the video lectures. We have uploaded those video lectures. I have cut that video lectures and put up a half hour lecture for one particular topic on my Moodle server. Student do listen that. Student uh, may go and search so many other lectures on the same topic and then we will discuss that same topic. We will solve some problem under data structure and we do that. So there definitely there is an option. Only thing is that we need to understand how you can use this ICT concept in our regular teaching and it gives very good results. So thanks to IIT because they have given and thanks to NPTEL because they have given lot many options available. Only thing that we need to have to change. Basically teacher is, has to become an agent of change. Then and then only it is possible. Thank you. Thank you. Madam, one question. Yeah. Uh, it is very nice practice, Madam IIT Bombay X, through 36 courses are available and students are doing that. But uh, whatever courses are available, so that courses uh, comes during the university exams of the students. Uh, like 3D Blender animation course, 10th April is the last date for registration. Later on this course will start and uh, probably in the month of May and June. Actually, university exams of the students come, so this task comes overlapping with the university exams. If there will be some change in the schedule and if uh, in the month of January to March, 
if students are free or in second semester or in first semester like uh, July to yeah. so, August, uh, September, in the, this, if exams are conducted, it will be more beneficial for the students as well as for monitoring for the students also. Uh, so uh, I agree with you, but so that's why I s said in my uh, slide also, so anytime, anywhere, uh, any place. Uh, so the, all the MOOC, uh, because we have the provision, we can open it anytime. So it, it need not be restricted for, for during the semester. So we can keep it open, so the self-paced MOOC, the advantage of that is uh, that we can keep it open for a longer time and people can come anytime and they can exit anytime. In fact, Dr. Samir he, uh, is here, so he... Yeah, because this uh, query was raised uh, regarding my course and uh, so I am going to uh, talk about it in the session at 4 yeah. o'clock. Uh, and uh, Kalpana un, uh, answered partially to it. So instead of this regular lecture based courses, like you have every Thursday 4 o'clock lecture and or even in MOOCs, like every Thursday 12 o'clock a set of videos will be released for the entire week and uh, assignment also will be released and next Thursday again set of videos will be released and an assignment will be released and the quiz will have a deadline of two weeks or something. So this is a this is a course which is the pace of the instructor. So it is instructor oriented pace. We have shifted from that mode uh, to self pace where we release all the content on the first day of the course and people or the true participants are free to choose their own pace. Whether they have four days at a, at a stretch of vacation and they want to complete it in those four days. In fact, uh, some of the statistics of my course show that there are participants who have topped the course by visiting my site only for four times. Right, so they have properly analyzed what videos they should look at, what should they download, when should they come and attempt the quiz, all that has been planned by students. So they are much smarter than what we are thinking. So if they are interested in the course, I have seen that they will find out time from any corner of their 24 hours. But if they are not interested, even if I keep it open for two years, they will always give me excuse that I was busy. So it depends and MOOC has that problem all the time. The success rate of MOOCs worldwide has not grown from 10% at all, whether it is Stanford, MIT or IIT Bombay X. And we all agree with that. It's only the way that how, uh, how it is interesting for students and how it is practically applicable to what they are doing. I think people will take it. And we are, we are here to offer. So now uh, we, will, we don't want to get into that debate of how to do that. We, I will try to address that in the session I'm holding. So let us uh, allow yeah. uh, Kalpana to continue with the next part. Uh, yeah. One question, like we, we need to, everybody need to ponder how to find out what is, what, what, what should be the interest of the students, how to find out that what he is interested in. <laughs> yeah, we, we have to you know, do a lot of experimentation. <laughs> One question. Yeah. So in uh, this discussion approach, yeah. See, uh, in a large class, there might be cases when only few students are interested in discussing certain aspect. So it might happen that discussions will digress and majority of the participants are not interested in the discussion. Uh, yeah, so but at the same time, if the teacher prevents the discussion, then it... Uh, uh, so that's why we have, uh, uh, in all these forums, we have somebody called a discussion moderator. No, no, not online, uh -huh. in the class discussion. Yeah, because so, uh, even in online, it's a major yeah, problem. Yeah. So, so uh, for online, so that's why the uh, job of the TA, the uh, teaching assistant, is to monitor the discussion forum. If, in fact, um, uh, it has happened that sometimes people post answers to the quizzes on the discussion forum. So we have to watch out a discussion forum very carefully. We have to say, uh, so that's why the discussion forum guidelines are posted. Uh, you, I had uh, uh, talked about it in the my beginning of my slide. That uh, So you have to have discussion guidelines and on top of that, even then people do such things. So we have to monitor the discussion forum very carefully. Uh, so I just want to wind up uh, because uh, my uh, colleagues will be um, giving you a, the, the demo of IT Bombay X uh, platform. So IT Bombay X, uh, so uh, in future, like already we have started the uh, first uh, skill development course, uh, Samir has given on th uh, 3D Blender animation and the 3D visual um, architecture. So he will be um, giving um, more courses and he will also be coordinating a lot of uh, vocational uh, and skill uh, training courses. 
and we also plan to uh, uh, this is already like professor shridhar ayer and Pro professor sanamurthy are doing a course which has already announced um, et uh, 611 this is for school teachers to train them how to use ict so we we are uh, doing all these courses um, and uh, you talked about swayam so we we all know that swayam is a national platform for moocs and already uh, there are courses available on so courses in arts, science, engineering, management from reputed institutions are available on uh, SWAM. So you can check uh, that out. Uh, so I uh, just want to conclude. So, may, so many believe that the future education would be MOOC based. And our experience is also quite comparable to what other universities have reported. So as Samir pointed out, the completion rate in MOOC is uh, the average is only 7 to 10 percent. But we have found in our blended MOOCs that this completion rate has increased and it has come to uh, 20, between 20 to 50 percent. So as you saw in the faculty development program, so blended MOOCs, we are able to achieve higher completion rate. So, uh, this, so within these two years, we have done a lot of experimentation and uh, we are, I'm just giving you the results of that. Uh, and as you all know, MOOC was developed in the uh, developed countries, US, UK. So for them, the students already have good education. So it is something like icing on the cake. But here, we have to make this because our students, they lack good education. So here, the, if you are offering MOOC, it, it is bread and butter for the students. So we have to make it as interesting, as useful for the students. So it is our job to make it interesting and useful. So I will leave you with a good slide in the end. So, uh, so MOOC, so first, objective of any MOOC is to educate but and the last this thing is to empower but between educate and empower you have the other two things so one is how to engage a remote student so this is very important especially in an asynchronous mode how do you engage your students so you have to engage them you have to also entertain them as uh, somebody pointed out like how, how do we know that what the students want or so there has to be and especially true when you are making a MOOC for the school children. So you have to, in somehow you have to make it very entertaining, uh, interactive. So there are also now studies on game-based learning. So we have to come up with new methods how to engage and entertain the students. Then because the next generation is all on the mobile and uh, internet. So we have to come up with new methods of doing this. Thank you. Urmila uh, and Hitesh uh, from the content team, they will, uh, uh, give you a demo of the IT Bombay X. So they will uh, tell you the first the LMS that is the learning management system which you see uh, on that um, platform and also the uh, instructor side the course management system like how one uploads the video or uh, other things. So it will have both learning management system and the course management system and because we are using the open edX platform internally both are connected so the learning management system and the course management system are connected but uh, because um, I, I know so many of you will be aware of the which is available on the screen on the dashboard but what how to upload a video how to do all this uh, how the instructor is supposed to do so they will also talk about that yeah hello everyone uh, as I've gathered, most of you know, uh, have, are familiar with IIT Bombay X uh, learning management system. So this is our home page. Most of you must know. When you log in, uh, you go to your dashboard. These are all your courses which you have enrolled in. When you go inside a course, this is your workplace. Where you can see the course outline. This is your video. And these are synchronized subtitles. You can change the unit by just uh, moving horizontally. This is changing a section. You can move, uh, yeah, you can just move horizontally and change the unit where you can see your slides if your faculty has added uh, slides for your session. Similarly, after the week, at the end of the week, there are graded quizzes. You can go to the graded quiz. And there are various types of uh, evaluation techniques for uh, I'm, you know, putting questions on uh, the session. Uh, this is, there are multiple choice questions. This is a single choice. Uh, then you can have uh, descriptive answers as well, uh, which has some advanced components like ORA and all. We'll, uh, yeah, uh, this is how you get 
the feedback when you uh, select the answers right or wrong and this is the uh, tip after the uh, answer is given so this is basically how the course is being done then this is a course info where you get updates uh, by the course team and you have some course structure and fre frequently asked questions as well this is a discussion forum there yes you can post your questions answer questions have a, you know be get involved in a discussion and this is pretty much about lms uh, most of you know most of the things we'll put more emphasis on how to use a cms a studio where you create a course so this is where the course is created you log in as staff or admin and then this is your dashboard here are the all the courses you have access to as a course team member so select one of the courses this is a course outline which you see in lms if you expand it this is a main section if you expand it this is a sub section inside it there is a unit go inside a unit and you can edit it as per your requirement you can add a video this is how you add a video you have a, a can add a component of a video your youtube url if you have a transcript you can uh, already uploaded on a youtube uh, youtube then it automatically syncs here you can have problems uh, n number of problems are uh, there so these are the basic common type of problems like check boxes drop down multiple choice numerical input and text input if you go to advanced section this is an open source platform. No, anybody can find me interested yeah. in the video course. Yeah. Is it possible for me to use this uh, software to upload uh, my, my own lectures? Possible. The platform is open source. Yeah. But uh, so we have adopted the open edX platform. That's what? Open. It's an open source. Open edX is an open source. What I'm asking is, for example, if I'm going to offer a course this semester, so I'm interested in uh, taking video. If we have a studio in our university. No, so, so you have to install, you have to do a lot of configuration. Okay. So because we have the setup here, because it, it needs uh, good hardware. As I told you, we have a, our own oh, cloud, oh. and uh, because the all. Oh, what I'm saying is, this, there are certain this this particular screenshot. I can up download from uh, the open source and I can use it in my computer, is it not? You then can use it. Yeah, I can customize it and I can g upload my lecture notes on that text box and I can take a video of my lecture and I can upload in that upload video and it will be stored in maybe in YouTube or some cloud space I can create, okay, in my university and I can allow my students to listen to it or watch that. Is it possible? Yeah, it is possible. Within my, within my university? Yeah, you have to yeah you have to configure the uh, settings and all that. Okay. You have to download first. It is available. The open edX is available on the GitHub. Okay. You have to download it from the GitHub and then you you can. Okay, uh, fine. Thank you. So as one of you, uh, when Ma'am was talking about uh, evaluation, one of you mentioned the uh, problem with evaluation of 500 students or 800 students. This is a there is a peer assessment component where peers assess each other and evaluate themselves. Which is very like subject. It is very useful for a large uh, quantity of candidates with uh, for subjective answers, answer types like essays and things. So this is an HTML component where you can add okay. updates about a course or a, you know you can make an announcement. You can add an iframe tool and include other external resources in that. So as we saw. Uh, there are course settings to be done like uh, course start time course end time that can be done through settings schedules and detail and all the schedule and detail about the course can be set here so the about page that you see in the lms can be made here you can invite your students for invite only course this is the about page on lms sir i have a question how do you compare uh, moodle with uh, this uh, Moodle is a uh, content management diff different uh, system. This is a MOOC. This is a massive online open course. No, no, no. The, I'm, because you you might have worked on Moodle also. So uh, how do you compare Moodle with uh, IIT Bombay X? Uh, right now I'll talk with IIT Bombay X. We'll talk about the comparison later. 
No, no, because uh, is, is it similar to that or is it totally different? So, um, uh, I think um, Moodle has the different, uh, Moodle is, first of all, it's not scalable. Um, so, that is a major difference because we have used Moodle in uh, T10KT and uh, at a time when the quiz, I, I hope you all remember, we had yes, taken, uh, uh, so more than 2,500 participants at one time, it could not even take that load. Okay. So, then we had to make it into slots, like okay. from this time to this time this uh, center will uh, uh, attempt the quiz. So uh, Moodle is not scalable, first thing. Okay. So, and this platform is scalable because it can handle lakhs of students at one, uh, one time. So okay. even if um, uh, one lakh students appear for the quiz the same time, it can handle that. Okay. And there are other small uh, like differences. So um, we don't know the, but we, uh, I'm pretty sure th this uh, platform is much better than Moodle, that's why people have moved to this platform. Thank you. So, uh, moving back to uh, creating a course, like say, setting your details and schedules. Uh, on the uh, LMS, you. here you can see, as a student, you can see your progress. So now, it is also, quiz-wise, it, it gives you your marks in a quiz and a total as well. So this is, uh, when you scroll down, this is a detail about uh, the courses you have, uh, the quizzes you have taken in each week and the scores for each quiz. So, um, if you have any uh, questions, uh, uh, we can answer, otherwise we'll break for lunch. Okay, thank you.